Mr. Ham and his followers have this remarkable view of a, a worldwide flood that somehow influenced everything that we observe in nature. A 500-foot wooden boat, eight zookeepers for 14,000 individual animals, every land plant in the world underwater for a full year. I ask us all, is that really reasonable? You'll hear a lot about the Grand Canyon, I imagine, also, which is a remarkable place, and it has fossils. And the fossils in the Grand Canyon are found in layers. There is not a single place in the Grand Canyon where the fossils of one type of animal cross over into the fossils of another. In other words, when there was a big flood on the earth, you would expect drowning animals to swim up to a higher level. Not any one of them did. Not a single one. If you could find evidence of that, my friends, you could change the world. One of the extraordinary claims associated with uh, Mr. Ham's worldview is that this uh, giant boat, very large wooden ship, went aground safely on a mountain in the Middle East, what we now call the Middle East. And so places like Australia are populated then by animals who somehow managed to get from the Middle East all the way to Australia in the last 4,000 years. Now, that to me is an extraordinary claim. We would expect then, somewhere between the Middle East and Australia, we would expect to find evidence of kangaroos. We would expect to find uh, some fossils, some bones. In the last 4,000 years, somebody would have been hopping along there and died along the way, and we'd find them. And furthermore, there is a claim that there was a land bridge that allowed these animals to get from Asia all the way to the continent of Australia, and that land bridge has disappeared has disappeared in the last 4,000 years. No navigator, no diver, no U.S. Navy submarine. No one's ever detected any evidence of this, let alone any fossils of kangaroos. So your expectation is not met. It doesn't seem to hold up. Another uh, remarkable thing I'd like everybody to consider, along inherent in this world view, is that somehow... Noah and his family were able to build a wooden ship that would house 14,000 individuals. There are 7,000 kinds, and, then, and every, there's a boy and a girl for each one of those. So it's about 14,000 and eight people. And these people were unskilled. As far as anybody knows, they had never built a wooden ship before. Furthermore, they had to get all these animals on there, and they had to feed them. And I understand that Mr. Ham has some explanations for that, which I frankly find extraordinary, but uh, uh, this is the premise of the bit. And we can then run a test, a scientific test. People in the early 1900s built an extraordinary large wooden ship, the Wyoming. It was a six-masted schooner, the largest one ever built. It had a motor on it for winching cables and stuff. But this boat had uh, a great difficulty. It was uh, not as big as the Titanic, but it was a very long ship. It would twist in the sea. It would twist this way, this way, and this way. And in all that twisting, it leaked. It leaked like crazy. The crew could not keep the ship dry. And indeed, it eventually foundered and sank a uh, loss of all 14 hands. So there were 14 crewmen aboard a ship built by very, very skilled shipwrights in New England. These guys were the best in the world at wooden shipbuilding. And they couldn't build a boat as big as the ark is claimed to have been. Is that reasonable? Is that possible? That the best shipbuilders in the world couldn't do what uh, eight unskilled people, uh, men and their wives, uh, were able to do? Shipwrights, my ancestors, the Nye family in New England, took, spent their whole life learning to make ships. I mean, it's very reasonable perhaps to you that Noah had superpowers and was able to build this extraordinary craft with seven family members, but to me it's just uh, not reasonable. 